Once I had a photographer yelling at the venue owner, that's the fastest way to end up on someone's blacklist. Spitting in her face? Holy crap. Hey, my name is Katie Sauter. I'm an by day, a planner by night. I'm going to tell you a bit about some seriously insane wedding drama with some wedding vendors who are getting in trouble. So let's dive into it. But first, if we can't learn anything from this drama, we are going to give it the big fat Sauter seal of failure because that's fun, I think. These are all from Facebook groups. I anonymize everything because I don't want anyone to get in trouble, which is why like the actual pictures are not shown. Believe me, they are real stories. So I don't make any of this up. Let's dive into it. Is anyone else seeing an uptick in vendors lately who are a little too eager about consuming alcoholic beverages while I do not drink on the job. I really, personally, I really do enjoy a jumbo margarita at the end of my day, but I'm not exactly going to do that. <laughs> while working. It's just not a good idea. It's unprofessional. Even if someone offered me one, I would say no, because I'm there to make sure their day goes well. As a wedding planner, as a coordinator, I need to be there to make sure it's going well. First commenter says, vendors should not drink at weddings. It's so unprofessional. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> someone else wrote, it is in our contract with the client for both the venue and the bar in-house bar service that no vendor, including family performing a service, may consume alcohol hall during their contract at time. Okay, so they are basically saying that family should also not be drinking if they are performing a service. She continues by saying, once I had a photographer yelling at the venue owner because who were we to tell them that they can't drink a glass of wine or two? She won't work here again. That's the right way to go. She says, that's fine. We won't allow you to. Oh my god, that's so dramatic though. Just yelling at the venue owner? Oh my god. That's the fastest way to end up on someone's blacklist. Another person wrote, It's always a couple of excessive people that mess it up for everyone else. I have a couple of drinks at weddings all the time after the party has started. We party with the guests and the couple, but it's literally a couple of drinks. It's part of our branding, actually, and our couples have never complained. I don't think it's inappropriate if the timing is right, keeping in mind that you still have to work and drive after an event. Well, I mean, if it's working for her, like... Okay, if that's part of her brand, if no one's complained about it, then I guess I don't see issue. Right, another person wrote, watch a photographer who had already had one or two beers stash several more beers in his bag before leaving for the night. Oh my god, so he's stealing beer? Someone else wrote, I mean, I'm very close friends with a DJ in town and even had him work my wedding. He advertises that he parties with a couple and he played at my wedding this June and got blackout drunk. Ooh, granted, he played my wedding for free, but I thought it was hysterical and he did a great job still. Okay, well, that's surprising, but like... You know, maybe I'm being too judgmental, but like, maybe it's okay if it's part of your brand. Like, this is clearly something that the DJ does. She continues though by saying, so I think from a vendor standpoint, even though that annoys me for clients, for clients, I want them to feel like they're the life of the party. I have a little bit more grace for them since that point. <laughs> she put a like a laughing, crying, laughing emoji. Maybe in certain situations it's okay. I guess it depends on the couple, right? If you're the kind of couple that really enjoys that kind of thing if you want all your vendors to party with you. So did we learn anything from the alcohol? I don't think so. So I guess that one gets the solder seal of failure. It is what it is. I don't think we've learned anything useful from it other than we should probably not be drinking as vendors at people's weddings. They should be drinking uh, if they want to drink and have a good time. We have another story, but let's dive into times. I have a freebie wedding timeline linked in the description below. It is great for being able to plan your entire wedding 12 months in advance. So it's a 12 month planning timeline. It's totally free. It also comes with a little wedding party guide, especially if you've never been in a wedding party before. It could be really useful for you. Jim has quick time over. Story two. Struggling a bit with vendors not setting up and tearing down items related to their service. For example, bartenders not clearing glassware from tables after service. Catering not staying to clear plates, glassware, silverware from tables. We're not even offering the service as an add-on. DJs, for example, not bringing a table linen. So basically they're saying like, if something is missing, they will talk to their clients. This is missing. To make sure that this is covered, you will have to spend more money. Reading contracts is a really big part of this because contracts should say what they do and do not do. One of them writes um, in a way that's like, there's no punctuation, so I have to like, 
boil it down a little bit better because it's hard to read out loud. She is basically saying that it's important as a wedding planner to communicate with all the vendors and just make sure that all the services are actually taken care of. There is something that's not covered that you will offer to do those services at an extra charge. First, ask the couple if the vendor, let's say a bartender, will be doing each of these five things. Setting up, unpacking glasses, barware, providing ice, who doing their job during the event, three, packing the bar after without help, or cleaning up and removing the remains of what their service entails, or five, disposing of their own trash. Then document the responses, and then one, tell the client where there are holes in their vendor services that will need to be filled, and email them a specific list for each vendor they hired, and two, ask them how they wish to proceed. Compile a task list for each vendor and who is responsible to accomplish each one. I email to the client the venue and the vendors a week prior and require they sign off on it. Then I post it in the kitchen area so there is no confusion. My team calls it the chore list. <laughs> Do you know specifically what their contracted services include? Include. People's booking their own vendors is almost always a problem because they don't understand the entire wedding ecosystem. For instance, they book a drop and go caterer to save money by not going with a full service caterer because a drunk Uncle Gary volunteered to do it. And or they said, I have a coordinator that can do it. Now you just became the kitchen junk drawer of services. I've had vendors say that they were going to handle things and then blatantly not do them. Sometimes vendors just suck and you learn to never use them again. I've been at this job 20 years now and for the first time this year, I had a vendor completely sabotage a wedding because they didn't like the client. Oh God. She said, and I worked so hard to bridge the gap and it still wasn't great. I felt horrible for that client. So it happens to all of us. We can't always predict it. Oh, what did they do? The venue was in charge of multiple parts of the day since they were full service, hour, parking, transportation, and bar service. And they didn't manage any of it. So I dropped everything that was my job to basically try to save the day. That's what coordinators do. They will drop everything to save the day because that is their job to make sure your day goes smoothly. Power went out, aka the generator. Transportation from cocktail hour to dinner took two hours. Venue had planned on 20 minutes. I gave them 45 in the timeline. It still wasn't enough time. Whoa! Oh no. The bartenders refused to set up their own bar or do champagne toast pouring slash wine pouring table side. They wouldn't make the specialty cocktails because they wouldn't find the ingredients that were in a cooler behind the bar because I placed them there. In parking, the venue owner didn't manage it, then got so mad about parking, he screamed at me, spitting in my face, spitting in her face. She says, literally had to wipe his saliva from my face while I got berated for something that was his job. Holy crap. Like I said, I've been doing this for 20 years now. Venue was pretty hard to get on the phone during planning and also over email. I sent a Word document email style contract for a $30,000 weekend price tag. Client was a lawyer and I advised them to draft a contract that at least bullet pointed what they understood they were getting. We did, venue, venue owner signed it. 30 days out, I sent detailed info on the plans. Don't think the venue read any of it. 10 days out, finally got him on the phone and he approved everything verbally, but then didn't execute any of it. Oh God. What is that? Your couple is the one suffering. It's their big day. They've paid $30,000 for this wedding and the venue who was supposed to take care of everything didn't. If I was that bride, I would be not just leaving a scalding review. I would be at least thinking about taking that to court because they signed a contract and did not follow through on their end. That's why contracts are so important to read. You need to know exactly what is in them to make sure that you, your wedding is covered in addition to them, because there might be holes. Someone else wrote, did they take them to court? I would have. Yeah! 
That's crazy. And I hope that venue is no longer doing events. Doesn't seem like it is a good fit for them. I had a similar situation with a venue that provided bar service, not loving how they think they can just stick someone standing behind the bar and call that a service when they don't really know how to bartend or take care of guests. All my years in the service industry, I would always clear tables when it was slow. You can see your bar and serve a drink when someone walks up, but doesn't make sense to blatantly disregard your work. Yeah, bartenders drinking client booze and not cleaning anything on the bar once the event was over, just walking away with a disaster that I had to clean? She's a coordinator, she shouldn't be doing that. That is not her job description. Client had three days of events on site using the same bar setups, so I had to clean so we could use the setups each day without yesterday's bottles and spills, and also so that I could return the rental equipment when it was over. There was just so much stuff to manage that became my issue because I couldn't have a successful event without it. The stuff I was already responsible for heading into the weekend was a lot even before this all happened. And I had to basically forego my job to help make basics happen. So I looked bad at my own job. Oh honey, well that sucks. But things like lighting and power are way more important than the napkin folds, you know? Yeah, that is true. You need to make sure the power is on and plumbing works. It's way more important than any napkin. People are not going to remember how your napkins are folded. They will remember that uh, the lights turned off and never turned back on. She said, she added, forgot to mention trash. The venue so didn't haul off trash. Oh, jeez. Just let it pile up in the cans. 270 guests worth of waste? That's insane. I tried to empty and hide bags behind the scenes, but we were in a field. I made a literal 20 foot by 20 foot trash mound for the venue just to get it out of eyesight of the guests in the tent. I heard, event was Saturday, that by Tuesday, pile was still there. The venue obviously didn't care. Holy Jesus. Oh my God. The event was on Saturday and they still had the trash there on Tuesday. That is insane. That is nuts. Venue obviously didn't care. I was still exhausted just thinking about that event. And those are only the major things that went awry. So much more than that even happened. And I couldn't have predicted any of that since we discussed it in advance. And yes, they're still booking weddings. Oh no. <laughs> I'm like, I'm ready to give this venue a bad review. And I've not even been there. I don't I don't know. She doesn't say which one it is. So it's not like I can blab it anyway. It sounds like they need to get their act together. All right, which part of this did we learn from? We did learn. Contracts are important, right? <laughs> as, as a couple, your contracts are really important. That last story, that story, the story with the trash mound and the venue not doing anything they were contracted to do, even though they were paid $30,000, that gets a failure. I can't think of a learning lesson there, that poor coordinator. Can you imagine that's your job? I just feel like I'm a coordinator. I've never had to do anything that insane. I also sell an ebook which covers some of these like unusual circumstances, either with vendors or with other people. And uh, join my freebie list linked below if you want two freebies. If you wanna keep riding this drama roller coaster with me, check out this video for a little uh, wedding planner drama where they actually were going to fire their clients. And then check out this video if you need a little wholesome break. Until then, click that like button and kiss that subscribe and keep it PG for me, okay?